Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am Sarah Caverly with the American Institutes for Research, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar for the What Works Clearinghouse Statistics Website and Training Contract, or WWC SWAT. Today's webinar will highlight WWC resources and how they can be used for teaching methodological concepts related to causal inference and internal validity. We have two great presenters who will share their expertise and answer your questions. Dr. Herb Turner is president and principal scientist of Analytica, is an adjunct professor of research methods at the University of Pennsylvania and Boston College, and has served as a reviewer for the What Works Clearinghouse since its inception. Dr. Emily Tanner Smith is an associate professor and associate dean for research in the College of Education at the University of Oregon. She is an applied research methodologist and with expertise in meta-analysis and research synthesis for evidence-based decision making. Dr. Tanner Smith also leads our training on regression discontinuity design and single case design standards for the SWOT contract. On today's webinar, our presenters will cover two topics. We will begin with a brief description of the WWC group design standards and their development, including the characteristics of a strong between group study design for causal inference reflected in the WWC standards version 4.0. Presenters will then describe possible uses of the WWC standards in the post-secondary classroom. We will provide examples of how the WWC, WWC resources can be integrated into post-secondary trainings on research methods and causal inference. Throughout the webinar, you can share questions with the presenters in the chat box, and near the end of the webinar, we'll have time for our presenters to respond to the question as time permits. All right, before we get started, we wanted to share the goals for the webinar. We hope you leave today with useful takeaways and a deeper understanding of relevant WWC resources and where to access them. The ability to integrate WW resources into post-secondary research design and analysis courses and begin supporting the integration of WWC resources into post-secondary research synthesis courses. The webinar topics are focused on WWC group design standards and how they reflect best methodological practice in causal research, WWC resources available for teaching causal inference and internal validity, approaches for using the WWC resources in introductory and advanced post-secondary research method courses, and information on the location of the resources and strategies for integrating them into methods courses. With that, I'll turn the webinar over to our first presenter, Dr. Turner. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for that uh, introduction and excellent overview of today's webinar. Uh, we would like to begin with an example of a graduate course where I use the WWC evidence standards as the foundation for teaching causal inference. I will describe the course process and the outcomes. So as this first slide shows, in spring of 2017, a nine master's degree students and four doctoral students at Boston College's Lynch School of Education participated in a semester-long program evaluation course with an emphasis on causal inference to identify what interventions work in education and related fields. Uh, next slide, please. The goal was to teach students how to arrange their thinking and logically derive internal validity criteria using standards 4.0 along with additional readings from the methodological literature. Students applied the standards, along with supplemental readings, to design impact evaluations to assess what education interventions have discernible effects. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of the course outcomes of the Standards Handbook 4.0, along with the WWC online resources, supplemented the lectures and provided students with additional hands-on learning outside of class. At the end of the course, all 13 students chose to complete the WWC certification exam rather than the instructor's end of course exam. Next slide, please. In addition, Eight students passed the exam and became certified either at the end of the semester or in the next semester. All students rated the online resources as credible, engaging, 
and useful for learning about the fundamentals of internal validity and making causal inference. Uh, next slide, please. So with this example as the backdrop, we would like to discuss how WWC group design standards embody the best methodological practices in causal research to identify what works in education and related fields. Uh, the next slide, please. So as this slide shows, the WWC systematic review procedures and standards have been in place since 2002 and were first disseminated publicly in May 2008 as Handbook 1.0, as shown at the top far left of this slide. Uh, the first three versions of the handbook, that is moving from left to right in the slide, versions 1.0, versions 2.0, version 2.1 and version 3.0 covered both systematic review procedures and evidence standards for RCTs, QEDs, and single case design studies. And if we look to the far right of the slide at the top where we see October 27 version 4.0, in version 4.0, systematic review procedures and evidence standards are now covered in separate handbooks, the procedures handbook and the standards handbook. The standards handbook in particular expanded design coverage to include regression discontinuity designs. It also refined methods for cluster assignment studies and added methods for handling missing data and estimating complier average causal effects or often known as treated on the treat, treated estimates in randomized controlled trials. And I think an important point that we want to emphasize is if you notice on the slide at the bottom, there's a text highlighted in bold, bold that says vetting. And these standards, not only have they been revised over four generations, but they have also been thoroughly vetted. All versions have been externally peer reviewed. For version 4.0, IES gathered input from the WWC Statistical Technical and Analysis Team, anonymous external peer reviewers, methodological experts, and the public. Next slide, please. So in this slide and the one that follows, we will identify and define each of the five core WWC methodological concepts. We focus on these five concepts because our experience with and data on WWC reviews show that these five concepts correspond to the five primary reasons that RCTs, or randomized control trials, and QEDs, or quasi-experimental studies, are rated as does not meet group design standards or have their rating downgraded. And importantly, these five concepts are fundamental to the internal validity assessment of a study that is conducted during the WWC study review process. So as the slide shows the first three concepts, concept number one is design, and it's defined as the method by which intervention and comparison groups are assigned. The second concept is attrition, simply defined as a randomized sample member missing an outcome. The third is equivalence, or also known as baseline equivalence, the similarity of analysis groups at baseline. Uh, next slide, please. And the final two concepts, confounds, a component of a study that is completely aligned with one of the study conditions. And finally, outcomes, knowledge, skills, attitudes, and other desired benefits that are attained as a result of an activity. So to conclude this discussion around the, the or presentation around the five concepts, these five concepts have been part of the WWC evidence standards since the WWC's inception in 2002. The definitions for each have been refined over time, as have the empirical basis for assessing attrition and equivalence in the analysis sample. 
Additional concepts such as cluster assignment and missing data have also been recently added. Next slide, please. So now we would like to discuss the topic that is central to the purpose of this webinar, which is to help you become familiar with the wide range of free WWC resources available on the WWC website and to illustrate how these resources can be used to teach causal inference and internal validity in methods research courses ranging from introductory to advanced. Next slide, please. So in terms of the topic we will, uh, the topics we will cover and the way we will uh, illustrate this is WWC resources can be used in the following types of courses with an emphasis on causal inference. Introduction to research design, which I will cover in a minute. Advanced research design, which my colleague Emily will cover uh, subsequently. And research synthesis, which my colleague Emily will also cover. A course content that includes these resources may be appropriate for honors level undergraduate courses or graduate level courses. Next slide, please. So just to give you an example of what a course overview may look like for a research design course in which we use the evidence standards as the fundamental building blocks, it may read something like this. The purpose of the course is to provide students with an in-depth and fundamental understanding of research design standards for assessing validity of causal inferences about the effects of educational, social, and behavioral interventions. The course is designed to build understanding of basic research design and statistical concepts to assess the design and study implementation features that can threaten internal validity. Uh, the next slide, please. So to help you with integrating the WWC evidence standards into your courses, we have developed this course planning matrix to help organize the many resources on the WWC website in a way that will allow instruct instructors to more quickly and more easily grasp what WWC resources are available on WWC systematic review and methodological topics for use in courses on research methods and research synthesis. Uh, this handout will be made available along with other materials used during this webinar. They will be made available after the webinar. Before describing the matrix, there is one other point to make about WWC resources as instructional resources. Uh, next slide, please. And that point is, since 2002, the WWC has created a wide range of instructional resources, ranging from videos to webinars to frequently asked questions. They're all based on the WWC Procedures Handbook and the WWC Standards Handbook that cover a wide range of topics. And so those two handbooks are shown to the left of this slide, and they are the foundation and the basis upon which the instructional resources you see in the website are built. This slide shows that the WWC Group Design Standards Online Training, which is shown on the right, is based on the content that is in the handouts, in the handbooks. In other words, uh, one way to learn about what's in the procedures handbook and in the standards handbook is to go through this online training. Uh, but finally, to help you decide what category of resources and what WWC topics that may be of interest for a graduate methods course, we created the course planning matrix as shown on the next slide. So take a moment to uh, examine this matrix in terms of the, the columns with the WWC, the first column to the left with the WWC topics, and then the subsequent column to the right which had the various WW resources that would correspond with that topic. The purpose of the course planning matrix is to provide course instructors with a panoramic view of the WW resources that are available for various WWC topics. By panoramic view, we mean rather than searching through the nested structure of the WWC web to find resources on various WWC topics, 
We provide a matrix view that presents a menu of resources from which you could choose when building, building your syllabus and building your course. For example, the first column in the matrix, starting from the left, lists the WWC topics. The subsequent columns moving from left to right in the matrix list the categories of WWC resources, such as the webinar videos, online training, slide deck, transcripts, and so on. There are 15 categories of resources with nine of those categories shown in the slide above. Notice that each category has a direct link to a location on the WWC website. Those are the, uh, inf the information you see within a particular cell that is highlighted in blue and underlined. A cell in the matrix displays the acronym for the available resource for a specific WWC topic, which is in the row, under a resource category, which is in the column. For example, for the WWC topic of group designs, which you see underneath the certificate training header under the WWC topic column, there is an online module, M1, a slide deck, M1S, and a transcript, M1T, highlighted in blue and underlined. And there are also written descriptions in the standards handbook section 2.A. All resource acronyms linked to the resource on the WWC website available for the standards handbook and procedure handbook resources that are available in those handbooks. Finally, in the handout version of the matrix, there are links at the end to the WWC help desk, the glossary of terms, and frequently asked questions. And although not listed in the matrix, Emily will discuss the database of reviewed studies which is a great resource for conducting meta-analytic research. Next slide, please. So I know I kind of walked you through the matrix verbally, but now let's, I'd like to walk it through you with a, a specific illustration on how to use it. So starting at the left of the slide, towards the bottom, you see one in a box, select your topic. So in this case, I've selected group designs as the topic of interest. Second, select the resource category you're interested in exploring or possibly using in your course. So if you look at the, to, at the top right of the matrix highlighted in the box listed with the number two, select a resource category. And notice underneath the arrow for that box of select a resource category, you have an option of online training, a slide deck, transcript resources, which will be of interest in an introductory research design course. In this example, we select the slide deck as the resource category that goes with our interest in group designs. Third, click on the resource acronym that represents the topic and resource you're interested in using. So in this case, if we're interested in the group design, we would uh, point to uh, the, I noticed these two arrows are a bit off. They, they're down at resource M2S, but they should be pointing to resource M1S. We're interested in group designs and the slide deck for group design. And so the box on the far uh, right, which says three, go to resource cell, click on the acronym to view. If you clicked on the resource M1S, you would get to the WWC website and see the group design. Um, also, based on the, where the arrows are actually pointing, M2S, that would be the slide deck you would go to if you were interested in learning more about attrition. But the point here is, given your interest in a topic and given your interest in learning about that topic through a resource, which in this case is the slide deck, you can use the planning matrix to identify those resources of interest for a particular topic. Next slide, please. Now that we've shown you what WWC resources are available and how to access them, in the remainder of the webinar, we, that is myself and my colleague Emily, will focus on how to incorporate these resources in introductory and advanced courses on methods and research synthesis. I will briefly, in my remaining time, 
cover the general approach for using WWC resources in an introductory course. Emily will go into much greater depth and spend more time on using WWC resources in advanced courses. So I may move a bit more briskly uh, through my course planning because the ideas that I, and concepts I talk about will be reinforced and expanded on by Emily. Uh, next slide, please. So the primary goals of int introduction to research design course plan that are building on the WWC uh, courses, we have to do with uh, three, three goals, three primary goals. The first is to develop strong and comprehensive skills to assess group design study quality. So the emphasis in the introduction, introductory courses are indeed on design. Second, earn a WWC certificate during the course. And I think this is a differentiator of the research design course when the decision is made to include the WWC evidence standards as fundamental building blocks. There is also an opportunity for students to earn a WWC certificate during the course. And then the third goal, which is again, I think an additional potential benefit of including the WWC evidence standards in a research design course, is students can also pursue, pursue group design certification as part of the end of course assessment. And so there are two, there will be two recommended course plans we will share that will have this same first goal. Uh, that is both course plans that I will illustrate. The goal is to develop a strong and comprehensive skills to assess group design study quality, but they will differ with respect to the last two goals of earning a certificate and pursuing a certification. In other words, we develop that we'll show you uh, two course plans. The second course plan that we show you acknowledges that some instructors may want more flexibility and not necessarily to tether their course to the pursuit of a certificate or a group design certification, in which case we will show you what a course plan for that alternative, those alternative goals would look like. Next slide, please. And so this is the uh, research design course topics and the WWC resources with a certification path. And this is the, uh, out, the course plan for a 15-week uh, course. So we're going to show it to you in two slides. So this is the first eight weeks of the course. There's just a few things I'd like to highlight about the course. First, we provided the weeks as just to give you an approximation of the amount of time it would take to, you might want to allocate to a topic. If you look at the topic column, you will notice that uh, fundamental to the course is the use of those five methodological concepts I introduced earlier, represented by modules one through five. And then if we move to the right, you notice the columns with online training, slide deck, transcripts, standards briefs, and standards handbook. The goal here is to illustrate to you how using the course planning matrix it's very easy for you to fill in resources that students could use in order to learn about these concepts, in addition to the resources that you would want to use in order to emphasize various aspects of these concepts to your students. The next slide, please. And the, and the slide is basically, we could walk through it in the same way, and, but notice I'd like to just point out as you get to the end of the course, weeks 13 through 14, there's room there for an end of course review. And then uh, in week 15, notice the group design certification test and the resource in terms of the online training has to do with actually completing the test. And so there would be an opportunity for students, as I mentioned in the example I had given of the course, I taught at Boston College where students can actually take a certification test in order to get that group design certification. Next slide, please. So here's where the primary goals of an alternative and more flexible course plan, and as I mentioned uh, previously, this is to recognize, you'll notice that in terms of the first goal, it is exactly the same as the goal for the previous course. Develop strong and comprehensive skills to assess group design Quality. 
But the second and third goal are put there in our recognition that uh, faculty members may want to have more flexibility. They may want to still use the, those five methodological concepts where there's lots of resources available that they can incorporate and use as building blocks, but you may want more flexibility. So consequently, the second and third goal says perhaps earn a WWC certificate with additional work beyond the course and perhaps pursue group design certification with additional work beyond the course. Next slide, please. And so you noticed here, we can show this flexible course, course plan. It's still 15 weeks as with the previous course plan, but notice that weeks one through four, if you look to the right where we had the resources listed, there's instructor discretion and flexibility on introducing internal validity, or you may want to introduce systematic review procedures, or you may want to uh, talk about how these methodological concepts are for, were developed with respect to systematic reviews, but they also can apply to designing primary research. So we give you flexibility in terms of how you introduce modules one through five, which represent those five key concepts. And then notice also in weeks 12 through 13, we provide a opportunity for you to introduce some other methodological concept that's important to internal validity, such as missing data. And then finally, there's a review and an end of course assessment. And notice that students can still pursue uh, and have that have WWC aspirations in terms of getting certified can still pursue that. But under this course plan, they would have to do more work on their own and outside of the course. And so at this time, I would like to turn the uh, next slide, please. So at this time, I would like to turn the webinar over to my colleague, uh, Emily, who will talk about how to plan advanced courses using WWC resources. Thank you, Herb. So the course planning matrix that was just described can certainly be used to structure an entire introductory research design course. But many instructors probably have advanced research design or statistics courses that they teach, and they may not be interested in planning their entire course around the WWC materials or around students' pursuit of certification. But instead, instructors might simply be interested in using these resources to supplement their existing syllabi. So in this next part of the webinar, I'll, I will describe certain types of WWC resources that may be relevant to the methodological and statistical topics that might be covered in more advanced courses. Next slide. Many graduate programs in education will offer coursework in advanced research design methodology and these types of advanced courses often seek to build upon introductory content, for instance, by covering a range of design and implementation features that may threaten internal and external validity. So over the course of the next two slides, we've outlined topics that might be covered in a 10-week advanced research design course. And again, we note the relevant WWC resources that instructors might want to incorporate for each of those potential topic areas. Now, in the interest of time, we don't discuss all of these resources in detail, but instead, I'll highlight a few examples on subsequent slides. Now, again, many of these WWC resources are written documents that could be used as required readings and jumping points for class discussion. But the WWC resources also include the online training modules discussed previously in the webinar, as well as a range of other useful videos and webinars that can be used to supplement your course readings. So for example, an advanced research design course might begin with introductory material related to causal inference and then move on to descriptions of experimental, quasi-experimental, clustered, and regression discontinuity designs. And so on the current slide, you see example resources including online training modules, uh, standards briefs, the standards handbook, as well as videos and transcripts. Next slide. And later sections of an advanced research design course could cover additional topics related to missing data analysis, intervention fidelity, instrumental variable analysis, non-design threats to validity, and reporting standards. 
So even if you as an instructor only cover some of these topics in your course, you can still select the WWC resources that will be most relevant to your existing syllabus and use these video and text-based resources to supplement your existing course readings and also to use those as jumping points for your class discussions. Next slide, please. Although it has already been discussed extensively in the webinar, it's worth highlighting here how the WWC's Group Design Standards online training modules can be a valuable resource for an advanced research design course. At present, these online training modules are particularly well aligned with course topics related to experimental, quasi-experimental, and clustered research designs. The online training is conveniently separated by training module, which makes it easy for you as an instructor to assign certain modules or subsets of modules as they correspond with your planned course topics. So instructors might, for instance, use these modules to cover key content in a manner that means that less class time has to be spent lecturing and more instructional time can be devoted to interactive discussion and reflection on the key issues that were covered in those training modules and those readings. For advanced research design courses that aim to increase students' competencies in becoming informed consumers of research, these online training modules could be used, for example, in class activities and projects where students might critically appraise and assess findings from published research articles. For advanced research design courses that might aim to increase students' competencies in becoming informed producers of research, these online training modules could be used in class activities and projects where students develop their own research study protocols and document the steps and procedures that they would need to take to ensure that their resulting study could potentially meet WWC design standards without reservations. Next slide, please. Now, of course, there are numerous other WWC resources that might be used in an advanced research design course, including, again, the WWC standards and procedures handbooks. Given the breadth of material covered in those handbooks, we've suggested in our webinar slides specific sections and appendices that might be useful for required readings in specific topic areas. The WWC handbooks are conveniently organized into sections that, again, will permit you as the instructor to select a portion or several portions of the handbook to assign for course readings. So for example, instructors that might be covering instrumental variable analysis in their courses, they may wish to assign students to read section 2D and appendix D of the standards handbook, as well as appendix G of the procedures handbook. Next slide, please. The supplemental materials provided on the WWC website also provide useful resources that can be used as focal points for your class discussions around critical design issues such as attrition bias, confounding, and other threats to internal validity. These supplemental materials also provide reporting guides that outline best practices for reporting and describing studies that use group design or regression discontinuity designs. These reporting guides can be a wonderful tool for teaching students about transparent study reporting and will be particularly useful in courses that are aimed at developing students' competencies in becoming producers of research. Instructors can use those reporting guides to help ensure that the next generation of researchers are trained on current best practices in scientific reporting standards. Next slide, please. Now that I've discussed the WWC resources that might be used by instructors of uh, advanced research design courses, the last portion of the webinar will discuss how WWC resources can also be used in honors level undergraduate or graduate level research synthesis courses that cover systematic reviewing and or meta-analysis methods for synthesizing causal research evidence. Next slide. Institutions of higher education are increasingly offering coursework on research synthesis methods, and those courses typically focus on providing students with an understanding of current best practices for synthesizing results for multiple primary studies evaluating intervention effects. Typically, a research synthesis course like this might cover a range of topics, including how to formulate research questions appropriate for evidence synthesis, how to conduct systematic literature searches, how to systematically collect data for an evidence synthesis, 
and how to use meta-analytic methods to statistically synthesize effects from multiple primary studies. Next slide, please. Now on the following two slides, we've again listed an example course plan for a research synthesis course, which shows the topic areas typically covered in courses like this, along with the WWC resources that you as an instructor might want to use for course readings, activities, and assignments. What's critical to note here is that the WWC has free resources relevant to almost every topic that might be covered in a research synthesis course including introductory material on the general procedures used when conducting an evidence synthesis, recommendations for best practices when developing research questions and protocols for a research synthesis, and equations used for estimating effect sizes and other statistical information needed to conduct a meta-analysis. Next slide, please. And perhaps most exciting, the WWC also provides example data sets that can be used to teach the range of statistical methods used in meta-analysis. Um, so now in the next few slides, I'll highlight a, a few examples of these resources that may be particularly relevant to you who may be instructors of research synthesis courses, including those example data from individual studies reviewed by the WWC. Next slide. Again, the WWC Standards and Procedures Handbooks are critical tools for instructors. And again, what's important to highlight here is that for research synthesis courses, it is the appendices in these handbooks that will provide the most relevant reading material for your students. Next slide, please. So for instance, um, in Appendix B of the WWC Procedures Handbook, um, you'll find a useful summary of the systematic literature searching principles that are currently employed by the WWC. So that appendix would be very useful background reading for your students, and it can also provide a template for your students for systematic literature searching principles. The appendix, for instance, also provides example search terms related to intervention, outcome, population, and study designs that are commonly reviewed in WWC products. And given the critical importance of search string development for any systematic literature review, these appendices in the handbook can be valuable to students because they provide exemplar templates that can be modified and adapted for the student's own systematic literature searches. But even for those courses where you may be focused solely on developing informed consumers of systematic reviews, these materials and readings can nonetheless be used in class discussions and activities where students might, for instance, critically appraise published evidence syntheses in the literature. Next slide, please. The appendix of the Procedures Handbook also provides a list and description of electronic databases that might be used in evidence syntheses, specifically in the field of education, and again, uh, those resources can be used in class activities where students might be um, uh, participating in exercises where they're identifying relevant sources of literature for their own systematic review. Next slide, please. An important component of any research synthesis course, of course, is to provide students with instruction on effect size metrics relevant for indexing the magnitude of intervention effects. And so again, the WWC Procedures Handbook and the appendices in that handbook will provide useful equations for the standardized mean difference effect size and the corresponding Hedges G small sample correction for the standardized mean difference effect size. The handbook also provides equations for extracting effect sizes from statistical information that may be commonly reported in primary studies, such as T statistics or F statistics. And those Appendices also present and describe equations for estimating log odds ratio effect sizes for binary outcomes, the Cox transformation that can be used to convert standardized mean difference into log odds ratio effect sizes, as well as many other useful equations, such as those used to correct standard errors from cluster design studies with unit of analysis errors. Next slide, please. 
The appendices of the Procedures Handbook also provides relevant readings and content related to the interpretation of effect sizes, including, for instance, a discussion of the WWC Improvement Index or the U3 Index, which is a useful tool for contextualizing and interpreting the substantive magnitude of a standardized mean difference effect size. Next slide, please. Another useful tool for instructors of research synthesis courses are the WWC's review protocols, which define the scopes of the systematic reviews that have been conducted by the WWC. So these protocols are an excellent resource for instructors covering content related to the formulation of research questions appropriate for systematic reviews, best practices when developing systematic review protocols, and literature search sources for systematic reviews. So again, these review protocols can be used as exemplars or templates of protocols that illustrate the level of detail and rigor that's needed at this stage of a systematic literature review. And again, these resources can provide students with example search strings and keywords that they may want to use in their own searches of electronic bibliographic databases. Next slide. Last but not least, I'd like to highlight what might be actually one of the most exciting but underutilized resources on the WWC website, namely the WWC's public repository of data from individual studies, which can be accessed at the website shown on your screen. So from this website, anyone can easily export an Excel data file that includes detailed information about individual studies reviewed for a WWC product. So most relevant for our purposes here um, is the fact that the individual study findings are available from studies reviewed for any type of WWC product. And so this repository contains study context and effect size data from a wide and diverse range of intervention effectiveness studies. Now the functionality of this publicly available website will allow visitors to extract a single data file that includes all relevant information about reviewed studies and it also allows users to filter the data on a range of factors, such as the final WWC evidence rating, the outcome target domain, the WWC review protocol under which a study was reviewed, the type or category of intervention examined in the study, and the study's ESSA evidence rating. So in other words, this website contains a wealth of coded effect size and study context information for thousands of effect size estimates from hundreds of studies. So instructors and students can easily access this public website and download one or more subsets of data that can be used, for example, data for lab exercises and course assignments that are focused on meta-analytic procedures and techniques for synthesizing effect sizes. Next slide, please. So here you see a screenshot of what the export functionality on that public web page looks like. And you see that exporting of data will extract a CSV file as well as a readme text file that provides simple instructions for how to import the downloaded data into Microsoft Excel. Next slide, please. So once you've exported those data from the WWC website, you can obtain an Excel spreadsheet that's similar to that shown here, which provides information about the study, its review protocol, the outcomes reported, and then extensive information including sample sizes, overall and differential attrition, effect size estimates, and improvement indices, and all of those data are available at the level of the effect size estimate. So this means that instructors and students can easily use these data files, for example, data analysis exercises related to, for instance, estimating fixed and random effects meta-analyses, quantifying heterogeneity across effects, and assessing publication or small study bias. Next slide, please. Perhaps even more exciting, however, is that those data files also contain a range of study contextual variables, including, for example, the delivery method of the intervention, the racial and ethnic composition of the sample, the gender composition of the sample, and other study context information. So you as an instructor can use these contextual data in example data analysis lab exercises and course activities related to moderator analysis or graphical and statistical methods such as meta-regression that can be used to explore and explain heterogeneity and intervention effects. 
So most instructors of research synthesis courses would probably agree that a difficulty when teaching these types of courses is obtaining useful example data sets for lab assignments, group activities, and final papers that are actually meaningful and relevant to the students in your class. So given the wide scope of education-related interventions, policies, and practices that have been reviewed by the WWC, most instructors will be able to find data in this repository that's interesting and relevant to their student body. So for instance, in a research synthesis course, for instance, if many of your students were interested in reading instruction for elementary school students, you might elect to download a data set that includes findings from individual studies that were evaluated under the WWC's beginning reading protocol, and you may download all effect size data uh, from studies that measured outcomes in the alphabetics domain among elementary school students. You could then use that data set, for example, homework assignments, lab exercises, and class activities to demonstrate the methods used to statistically synthesize results from multiple primary studies. So overall, the WWC's data from individual study website is perhaps, to me, one of the most exciting and novel resources available to instructors and students, particularly instructors of research synthesis courses who might want access to example data sets on evidence synthesis topics that will be meaningful to your student body. These example data sets can then be useful in supporting instruction related to the statistical synthesis of effect sizes using meta-analytic techniques. Next slide, please. So now, now that we've covered a range of tools and techniques for integrating WWC resources into post-secondary research courses, we'll conclude the webinar by answering uh, questions uh, from the audience. And so I will now turn this over to my colleague, Dr. Sarah Caverly. Great. Thank you, Emily and her both for sharing that helpful information and strategies for integrating the WWC resources into post-secondary methodological courses. I also want to emphasize, I know both Herb and Emily mentioned this during their sections, but all of the resources that we described today and the links that will be shared, these are available at no cost to you and your students um, and publicly accessible as well. And we will be sharing the matrix that was highlighted in the beginning of the presentation um, with the links that are embedded, um, as well as an archive of the webinar um, in any of your Q&A that we don't have a chance to get to this afternoon. So let's jump right in. So before the webinar, as you all registered, you shared questions that you had um, about the process of integrating the WWC into your courses. Um, and throughout the webinar, we've been collecting some questions as well. So the first question that we have for Herb and Emily is where can I find additional research resources such as free webinars in order to learn more? Herb, do you want to take that one? Herb, you might be on mute. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Yeah. I was on mute. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I recognize that uh, this question was submitted before the webinar, but I hope now, having gone through the webinar, it's uh, clear to everyone that the course planning matrix that will be made available as a handout after this webinar provides a list of uh, 18 categories of resources, WWC resources, which includes both webinars and online training videos. And using the matrix, you can quickly and easily identify a WWC topic of interest and the specific resource, in this case, a webinar or video that's aligned with what you're interested in. Great, thank you. The next question that we received um, during the registration process is, is it possible to incorporate the WWC resources into a research methods course, along with other methods papers and tutorials, to expand upon content in the WWC resources? Emily, can you help us answer that? Yes, absolutely. And I think the answer is a resounding yes. Um, so as we discussed briefly um, at the beginning of the webinar, the WWC evidence standards and handbooks have been through several generations, uh, so four generations of revision. Um, and so those standards are continuously being updated to align with the state of the art in the methodological literature on causal inference. And so that's why, you know, for this webinar, we've been discussing how those resources 
can be used as fundamental building blocks in these research methods courses. Um, but as we illustrated throughout the webinar, um, really there are many ways that instructors can uh, use these as supplementary resources, right? So you don't have to design your entire course around the WWC resources. You can have your existing uh, methods, papers, and tutorials that you may have as assigned resources or as assigned readings, and then supplement those with these webinars, handbooks, example data sets. Um, and so we would, for instance, envision that many instructors would use these WWC resources to supplement other course readings. Um, and those other course readings, for instance, might go into more in-depth, um, or those other course readings might be example empirical articles that demonstrate some of the key concepts discussed in those other readings. So absolutely, we, we think that these WWC resources can be incorporated alongside any other methods, papers, and tutorials that you would assign for your students to read. Great, thank you, Emily. And Herb, the next question is, students still have trouble understanding the term resources, how do we include the growing open resources in post-secondary courses? Right, so um, as I said in response to the uh, previous question, Sarah, that I hope it's clearer now that instructors do not necessarily have to refer to WWC resources, but can choose to use more descriptive labels, such as webinars, uh, training vis videos, or readings that might resonate better with students. So as discussed in the webinar, uh, the course planning matrix has these category of resources, so you no longer have to refer to resources generically as we did prior to the webinar. But now we hope you're comfortable with referring to these resources based on the specific categories in which they've been organized. And I wanna emphasize that it's really up to the instructor uh, how to include open resources, or any other resources in that matter, in the course that builds off of the evidence standards, but we recommend that they align with or are consistent with the WWC resources you include in your own course. Great, thank you. And Emily, I'm curious if you can help us better understand how we can use the WWC resources and special education research methods courses, in particular, um, Given your role in the single case design standards um, and the training there, if we can expand on what resources are available to support that as well. Yes. Um, so uh, today's webinar did focus on um, a range of post secondary research methods courses that could be offered in broadly in education, social science, or behavioral science disciplines. And so I do believe that you know, many of the, the tools and resources that we covered in today's webinar um, should be relevant to instructors of special education courses. And again, instructors might want to use that course planning matrix um, to select those WWC resources that might uh, work well with one's existing syllabus um, and content area. Uh, but it is important to note really that in today's webinar, we did focus primarily on methods courses that would focus on between group study designs, such as randomized control trials, quasi-experimental designs, and regression discontinuity designs. And those types of designs do often require larger sample sizes. Um, so I'm glad you raised the question about uh, the WWC single case design standards. Um, so we didn't focus on those in today's webinar, but it is worth highlighting that the WWC currently has uh, pilot evidence standards for appraising uh, empirical research that use single case or single subject or in of one experimental research designs. And those pilot standards are currently covered in Appendix A of version 4.0 of the WWC standards handbooks. Um, and so again, you might, for instance, uh, use that part of the appendix as required reading. Um, and you might also, for instance, um, extract individual study from single case design studies that have been reviewed for the WWC. Now, we didn't cover these uh, single case design standards uh, much in today's webinar, but I do think it's useful for instructors to realize that the WWC does have those resources uh, related to single case designs. Now, at present, there are not online training modules focused on the single case design standards, um, but we would like to acknowledge um, that the 
sort of revisions and updates to the single case design training and certification materials. That's an upcoming priority for the WWC. So we do expect new resources to be forthcoming soon around the single case design standards. Um, so I would say, you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, we have a lot of new resources that we'll be developing and posting publicly. Um, and we hope to expand those resources for instructors teaching those single case design courses and, for example, those special education research methods courses. Great. Thank you, Emily. And in the last few minutes, I have a final question. And Herb, hoping you can help us with this. I'm curious about the student perspective and their experiences with using the WWC resources. You referenced earlier that you had used this as part of a course that you had taught. Um, so wondering if you could share feedback that they provided to you about the experience. Uh, sure, Sarah. You know, I think uh, the primary feedback, and as I uh, summarized in the introduction when going through the, the course example, was that the uh, many WWC resources, because they're varied in their presentation in terms of the webinar videos or the slide deck or the transcripts or the standard briefs, all those various categories, I think that uh, you know, the overwhelming feedback was that for a methods course, they found the instructional approach uh, much more engaging because they were able to uh, look at these particular concepts from different points of view and being, uh, being presented in different ways. And so being able to see the same concept presented through various media, uh, they found that to be very helpful. And then I think from a, a practical point of view, they found the opportunity to gain a certification in uh, group design to be uh, beneficial in terms of improving their uh, curriculum vitas and you know, potentially uh, launching their careers as uh, early career researchers. Wonderful, thank you for that perspective, very helpful. So we're noticing that there are a few additional questions that we will include in our Q&A. Um, as we post the webinar, this will be archived and available on the WWC website, along with the course planning matrix um, and the full Q&A with full responses to all the questions that have been posed. So this concludes our time for the webinar today. I'd like to thank our presenters and our participants for joining us today um, and deepening our knowledge of the WWC resources and their integration into methodological courses. Just as a reminder, all of the information shared today is publicly available, including the data on individual studies. Um, we have one upcoming webinar that is focused on coding the study context during the review process um, that is part of our series, and that will occur on May 8th. And to learn more about the webinars offered by the WWC as well as IES in general, including those from the Regional Education Labs and other organizations, be sure to sign up to receive notices through the IES News Listserv. We should be sharing that link, I believe, in the chat box for you. If you're not already part of that, it is a great resource to learn about what is happening with IES and their new endeavors. And we'll be posting an archive of the webinar, as I mentioned earlier, along with the Q&A um, and a handout. In the they should be accessible within the next few weeks. So thank you again for joining us today, and we will see you next time.